So you have probably heard some pirate tales, tales of the nefarious pirate Sir William Morgan, better known as Captain Morgan. There's also Captain Kidd, and of course, one of the best known and most widely feared, Blackbeard. Well, the Chesapeake Bay is the origin of some pretty interesting pirate tales as well. With us this afternoon to tell us more about those tales, which are the subject of a new book called Pirates of the Chesapeake Bay from the Colonial Era to the Oyster Wars. This is Dr. Jamie Goodall, who is the uh, author. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, thank you for having me. So can I ask what got you into researching piracy and privateering? Um, it was sort of a roundabout way. I was working on my master's degree and I took a course on European imperialism and I came across a quote that compared Sir Francis Drake and Sir Henry Morgan, so I wanted to know more about that comparison. And one thing led to another. When I got to my doctoral program, the advisor that I got said, why don't we turn this into a doctoral research project for you? And so it went from there. And you said, OK. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let me read this. The description of your book reads, the story of Chesapeake pirates and patriots begins with a land dispute and ends with the untimely death of an oyster dredger at the hands of the Maryland Oyster Navy. Yes. Tell me about that. So Berkeley Muse and a friend of his decided to go out on their ship one night and uh, unbeknownst to Berkeley, his friend had pirating oysters in mind and the Maryland Oyster Navy caught wind of this and went out to capture them and they, instead of firing off just a few warning shots, ended up firing a barrage of shots against this ship and Berkeley Muse was hit during this and he died as a result of his injuries. Wow. So we've heard uh, tell of the golden age of piracy, yes. but piracy in the Chesapeake Bay was a little different. It was. I mean, it operated quite similarly to Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, the Chesapeake Bay, of course, was well stocked with ships coming in and out, uh, a lot of times carrying goods from the Caribbean, um, from the uh, East Indies. And so the pirates here were operating very similarly in that these vessels were prime targets. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay, so now um, explain about the Oyster Wars. So the Oyster Wars started in the 1880s. Um, we had two different issues going on at the time. First, you had uh, New Englanders coming down to Maryland and Virginia waters to steal our oysters mm -hmm. because they had already dredged and destroyed their oyster beds. So um, the governments of Maryland and Virginia began issuing laws to prevent that. So those New Englanders became known as oyster pirates. We also had the issue of dredgers versus tongers. Tongers go out and they pluck oysters bit by bit, so they're not as disruptive to the bed, whereas the dredgers come and dredge the entire oyster bed, right. obviously collecting more at a time. And so those who dredged became known as oyster pirates as well because the governments, again, put laws into place to prevent that. And when it came to the oyster pirates, there were a lot of convictions and executions. There were. Um, for the most part, the government pardoned oyster pirates. Uh, the Virginia governor, for example, uh, Cameron, he had captured a number of oyster pirates during the first oyster war, but so many of the people had deemed them as positive members of society, and so he was sort of forced to pardon them, um, especially since so many of them were younger men right. with families. And there is so much more to tell, which is why there's a book. There is. Okay. Dr. Jamie Goodall, the book Pirates of the Chesapeake Bay. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this afternoon. See, I got to get me another book now and see what's going on with this. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.